Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. I hope you're having a great day. Today I have a really quick video. I just want to share my overclock settings for mining Conflux, which uses the Octopus algorithm. If you're not familiar with the Octopus algorithm, it's more core intensive than ET hash. So we're going to be using a little bit of the higher core clock, but I don't need as much memory that I would use typically if I was mining Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, or even Ergo. But I'll be showing you the overclocks in a little bit. But before I do, I just want to say thank you very, very much to all my subscribers for your continued support. I've reached 20,000 subscribers and I'm truly grateful. So thank you very, very much. And I'm going to do something really cool, a future video before I give the announcements. And I have a lot of different miners. I have everything from GPU miners, mini ASICs, all the way up to the large scale industrial ASICs. I cover a lot of different content on my channel and hopefully it helps you. So when you're done with today's video, definitely go check out one of those other videos. But before I show you my overclocks today, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Jingle Mining. Jingle Mining is a global distributor of some of the most powerful and profitable miners in the world. You may already be familiar with them as premier distributors for Jazz Miner, iPolo, and Annex Miner. But did you know beginning in 2023, they've expanded their miner lineup? They now carry a full lineup of miners from Gold Shell, Ivy Link, and even the latest Bitmain miners, including the KA3, the world's most powerful and profitable Kadena miner. So if you're in the market for a new ASIC miner, check out JingleMining.com. I'll be putting links in the video description below. Let me give you a quick overview of my test rig after I get past these really noisy ASICs. This is my test rig. It used to be my LHR rig, but we know we defeated LHR. I have an MSI Gaming X Trio 3060. What a beefy card. A Zotac 3060 Ti in white, an EVGA XC3 3070, an EVGA XC3 3070 Ti, a Founders Edition card as well flying, and then I have an EVGA 3080 and an EVGA 3080 Ti for the win card. Beautiful card. And this is my whole test rig. It's running on an HROC H110 Pro BTC motherboard, powered by a Hewlett Packard Server Power Supply and an EVGA Power Supply. If you're using NiceHash, you're going to be coming into the extra commands tab within NiceHash and you're going to go scroll to your miner. So I'm using NB miner and I'm going to be using Octopus. So the commands to set in the overclocks would be dash dash C clock space at symbol and then the absolute, it's like a locked core clock value. It's not an offset. And then dash space dash dash M clock. And then I'm going to be using a memory clock offset here to specify my memory clock. And then you're just going to choose what is a reasonable value for your fans based on your guess, cooling situation. If your mine is running hotter, you may want to put a higher fan, or you may want to adjust your memory clock down a little bit lower. But I just kind of wanted to show you this is what you would be entering in if you were doing it in Nice Hash. For the remainder of the video, I'm going to be demonstrating to you in Hive OS. And I'm just going to be giving you two values the locked core clock and the memory clock value. And the fan, you're going to probably set somewhere between 70 and 100% depending upon your cooling situation. To demonstrate the mining and share my overclocks, I'm going to be using this split view. On the left side, you're going to see the miner screen. And that miner is running for about 10 hours and 53 minutes. So it's been running for quite a while. I've actually been testing for a couple of days to reach these overclock settings. And on the right side, you see is the Hive OS dashboard. And that's where I'm going to be showing you the individual overclock settings. Let's get started. So beginning with my MSI Gaming X Trio. This is a really beefy thick card. It almost looks like a 3080. So it has great cooling and fans. So I'm using a locked core clock 1350 and a memory clock offset of plus 1500. And from that, I was able to get about 42.2 mega hash using about 122 watts. The next card I'm testing is my Zotac, the white 3060 Ti. That card, I'm using a locked core clock of 1290 and a memory clock offset of plus 1500. And I was getting pretty good on the hash rate. I was getting 53.9 mega hash, but it was using about 156. So I'm still going to be trying to refine this. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to know. Drop it down below. I'm really kind of unhappy at how well the 3060 Ti is performing. But the next card is my all-time favorite, and this is the RTX 3070. And this is using a locked core clock of 1110 and a memory clock offset of plus 1500. I'm getting, look at that, 54.35 mega hash using only 132 watts. 
So the card is an absolute great performer. All around, just I think 3070 is my favorite card. Is 3070 your favorite card too? I'd love to know, so drop a comment down below. The next card I tested was my RTX 3070 Ti. This is another EVGA XC3 card. I used a locked core clock of 1290 and a memory clock offset of 1500, and I was able to get 71 mega hash, but it was consuming 271 watts, so it's not very efficient. Next card I tested was my RTX 3080, and this I'm using a locked core clock of 1080 and a memory clock offset of plus 1000. My card actually, I need to, I think, do some thermal pads on it because it's running hotter than it should. I actually had to dial the fan up to about 100 just to keep it, you know, within about 90 degrees, which is a little hotter than I'd like it to. But overall, in my testing, I was getting 87.72 mega hash using about 269 watts. And I think if I had better thermal pads on the card, I'd probably be able to do a little bit better. Last card I tested is one of my favorites. It's the 3080 Ti, and it did great mining octopus overall, using a locked core clock of 1185 and a plus 1000 memory clock offset. I'm getting 105 mega hash using 302 watts. And I'd be really happy with this result, but I know when I originally tested the 3080 Ti, it's not including the fans and the RGB, it seems, in the wattage. So it's probably running at almost 30 to 40 watts higher than it's actually showing me on the miner. But these are my overall mining results, and I'm really pleased with them compared to a lot of the stock values I was seeing coming out of tools like what to mine. They were showing me a lot higher on the wattage. That about wraps it up for today, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing my overclocks, and hopefully it gives you some ideas on ways you can improve your mining on your GPUs. And if you enjoy this content, please remember to like and subscribe. One key final point I want to make is I was doing some reading and apparently there's a halving going on right about now. I don't know if it's true or so I can't confirm it, which will actually chop the revenue for Conflux in half. Although there is some optimistic news too that the price of Conflux may be rallying up still quite a bit more than it has. So that may even offset it. So always do your own research and keep an idea Let's see what the profitability is. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And until next time, stay safe. I'll see you on the next video. Happy mining.